call the meeting to order. We are all present, with the exception of Jerry, who didn't indicate otherwise, so I expect he'll be here shortly. He's on the gas station. He should be on his way. Is he? Yep. Okay. If you would all stand, face the flag as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Some of us have got our priorities messed up, which is why we're here at 4 o'clock. <laughs> but uh, we'll allow that to happen because they're senior dads. Um, any changes or amendments to the agenda? We do have one. If you could, um, on your second page there, ask, add one more uh, family medical leave. So we have a total of three leaves. Yep. Three instead of two. That is correct. Six a year. Just yeah, request. six A. Six A. That'd be fine. Call it medical leave. Okay. With that amendment, I would look for a motion to approve the agenda as shown. I'll make a motion. Kurt on the motion. I'll second. Rob on the second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Scheduled presenter. Sometimes we have these happy moments like this, and uh, this would be one. Beth? Yes. Um, it's funny. Jeff Larson and I, the few times that we've been able to speak on the phone, it's been situations like we're going into a curtailment, or you need to shut down your energy use, or something kind of, um, something that needs immediate attention. I got a call from Jeff with great news, and we're so excited to have this partnership with Minnesota Energy, and he has brought us a present today. I'll That's let him yep. surprise you all. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, rebate check for $15,000 for the oh. work that you guys did on the boilers. And if I remember right, it was two boilers? It is, place? two. Okay. That's correct. The nice thing is, somebody else does all the work I get to come and do. <laughs> <laughs> so I have lots of friends out there in the world that they get to do this for. But uh, we just wanted to make sure we come here and uh, thank you for making use of our rebate programs. And I uh, hope you continue to do that so you can come here with uh, more checks and maybe even bigger checks in the future. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We did pre-take a picture, and we'll make sure that everyone's tweeting that out. We'll get it on our Facebook page right after the meeting, yeah. and then um, the, the local newspapers here as well. So great. thank you so great. much. Yep, and we'll get it out on our Facebook great. and uh, Twitter also. So okay. thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Reports, we have no students. We are on. at speech right now, sure, but sure. it's attached if you'd like to read it. Okay. In the interest of time, on the attachment, I would ask you to take a look at that. If you have any questions, you can contact through that. Um, committees. We will, uh, we will be doing our mid-year eval summary by the board next and that will take us to a closed session. I'm, uh, I'm using the rules of order here and you need to give me a request on, in writing so I'm forcing, forcing us to go into closed session. But uh, before we do that, are there any uh, committee assignments that we've had since last meeting that anybody would like to uh, speak to? Um, I just met with uh, Amy Downbeck real quick about his goals. And Direction. Directions. And <laughs> and uh, explain to her a little bit just that, you know, sometime in the near future, come in and let us know how they're kind of going to proceed to get to those directions, goals, um, and go from there. And she says, not a problem. Or put them together and let us know, and she'll come in and let us know how they're going to do it. So. so then from there, we'll get the goals. What they give us. Yeah, what they're working on or going to be working on, and then May or and next And remember, next this doesn't go into place until next year. Yeah. So this gives them a nice, you know, few months to kind of get that organized yeah. and put together. And we had, uh, we had a choice, as you recall. Yep. I, I listed both of them and asked her take both or run with one. Kind of left it up. Yeah. Because yeah. both of them had so many different parts in them. I mean, that they could have worked on, I think, that mm -hmm. if they would just want to run with one for now, then 
I guess that's next one's done for the future. Most of this stuff is over my head, but I will admit <laughs> after 45 minutes of conversation, it piqued my interest what they were going to bring back. Yep. And I'm not going to be that kind of guy. <coughs> um, anything else? Um, I don't know if I can comment a little bit, Jen, on the, uh, I guess it was the health and wellness curriculum that is going to be coming down the pipe here. Yep. Um, Jen got together with some people from uh, uh, myself and some administration and also some outside people uh, in the community and just talking about where we might go with the new programming for wellness and, and health for kids in elementary through, mm -hmm. I guess, what grade is that through? Is it through ninth? It was either ninth. Through ninth grade. And just, they, they're, they're coming up with a new program and it, it, they're trying to decide what's going to be most appropriate for <coughs> for our schools, our, our classes, our <coughs> so, and I think that'll probably be talked about a little bit after this meeting, yep. is that right? Okay, yep. I'm a little part of that, but Brenda, you will, so that'll be good. Yes, yep. mm -hmm. Any other committees? Um, tech meets tomorrow. Remember, meetings can be completely interactive now, so if you want to follow along online, you're welcome to do that as well. The okay. Ed, well, the Ed Foundation's planning for their April fundraiser. So, if anybody has any donations, please get in touch with them. You know what the date is on it? 23rd. April 23rd. Mm -hmm. If they do make a donation, did, can they uh, use you as the go between, or is there somebody they should be contacting sure, directly? Sure, contact me or Jerry Geiken or anybody on the Ed Foundation. Okay. okay. Or the, uh, the office here will be fine too. Can they come the, right to the office? Yeah. Okay, thank you. At this time, we will do a uh, closed session as we do our mid-year evaluation on the superintendent. Um, in actuality, this is the most formal one we've ever been through in my tenure here, so probably long overdue. And uh, so... Can I, can I request it to be open? Um, I just no, didn't. you can't. <laughs> oh. I looked at this whole thing, Beth, and okay. said... No, you can't. Um, yeah, for no other reason, when we're doing the uh, eval, there's a timetable to be set, and one of them was um, you can request it to be open if you uh, contact the board chairman in writing ahead of time and leave it to me not to contact you to tell you that. So we will, uh, we will go into closed session as soon as I get a motion and a second for such. Motion by Jerry, second by Brenda, to close the meeting for our mid-year eval. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Public input. Concerning matters of data privacy, you may speak, but not address criticism toward an individual, district employee, Lots of comments down there after that, but this is supposed to be a building type of conversation. Does anyone have any input? Closed. That didn't take long. Consideration to approve the finance report. All right, well, tonight is actually very short. If you notice in your packets, it's one page, or if you want to look up here, you certainly can. Um, the things I'd like to definitely point out are the top line. If you look up here, this is our um, account balance as of right now. You're going to start seeing these really big numbers here. Those are the bonds, okay? So when those start coming in, that's the money that you'll see down here. If you look, um, for example, like here, capital facility project, those are those bonds you've approved. And then here will be the, the amount that will be coming at the end. So those are your bonds. So now your spreadsheets are going to look like we have more cash flow than we do. Just know that we'll be paying those facility bonds and then being reimbursed for those. So if you have any specific questions, everything is really, like I said, it's a really short one. Josh put this together. Um, I can ask any, answer any specific questions. Um, just know that those, those big capital facility project payments, um, that isn't coming out of your general fund, that is coming out of your bonds. Okay? We're beginning our lease payments right in the middle of everything there. Uh, your bus leases, you mean? Yes. Um, we've paid those all along. Yep. It's just the yeah. end of it. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And you'll see, Josh does a nice job of putting two of five, three of five, anything like that, so we always know which one we're talking about. Because we currently have five leases right now. And we're going to get into that a little bit later tonight, Josh. 
and I attended a transportation meeting, so we've got that ready to go as well. Questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Jerry. I'll second. Second, second by Josh. Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consent agenda items. We're going to put this on the overhead from now on. Um, these I probably won't do because if you have any specific questions, I can pull up, but I can pull up anything you'd like. I know it's new, Bob. <laughs> well, I just don't like sitting in front of yeah. that thing. There's a lot of reflection that comes off the top. <laughs> yeah. Under the consent agenda items, um, anything that we see here should be considered routine and can be considered routine, and we can enact them in one motion. In the event anybody wants to discuss any single item, we can remove it from the consent agenda. So, if number one, if you've had an opportunity to look at the minutes from our three previous meetings, um, approval of the resolution with the acceptance of gifts, personnel items, and monthly bills. I did pull up the gifts just to acknowledge all of these wonderful people in our community that donate every single month. We get things like this, so. Um, as you're well aware, you'll see those donations every month, but I think it's a really nice opportunity to kind of show them to the community as well. So thank you to all these people. Um, just real quickly, our, it just seems to be that we were required to put down just any and all donations, but can we ever can we ever make a motion to not approve anything, let's say, or not not run anything through less than a hundred dollars or less than fifty dollars? You really should do with the gifting law, you should do really anything over five dollars is what the recommendation is. So I know it seems silly a, a PTO to donate a five ninety nine book to a classroom. The teachers have been tremendously wonderful just sending an email. Uh, the principals, if they get anything, they just send it over. This isn't a lot of work. We just all have a Google Doc that every time a donation is made, we add it. Um, there is a possibility we could always miss something that's been donated to the school, but we'll try really hard not to have that happen. So. Okay. Anything there that would like to be discussed in its own, or can we get a number of the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion by Kurt. I'll second. Seconded by Rob. Yep. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Gary. Full business, consideration to approve the spring head golf coaches. Why is this different from the approval we made last month? I think it's just a formality because the names were attached last month. Correct. I made that point at the end of the meeting that yes, we made a motion did. to <laughs> yes, you approve did. the two positions equally, but never tied names to them at the time. I just figured we'd revert back to the last meeting, but that isn't We'll make it official. Yeah, yeah. damn it. <laughs> Okay, since this is an action item, we would look for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Uh, do we have here who we're approving? I'm sorry, say again? Do we have here who we're approving? Is that on a yeah. separate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we have okay. I was going to actually ask if we could make the motion to approve each individual. But Jerry already made his motion. I don't know if he'd want to amend it. Doesn't make any difference to me. Okay, so we'll vote. I'll second a motion if you vote individually on them. I'll make a motion to uh, vote on them individually. Okay. Um, I don't know if it needs to be a motion item, but um, we have a consideration for Lee Gisbold as head girls golf coach. Can I do it that way? Yeah, that's it. perfect. Line. Okay. So do we do a motion then for the other head coach? Let's do these one at a time, okay. sequentially. Looking for a motion to approve Lee. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion by Brenda. Second by Jerry. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. All in favor, show of hands. Three. All opposed, show of hands. Three. We differ from last time. 
that fails on a 3 3 vote. So does it stay the same then? Hmm? It doesn't pass. It doesn't pass. Um, so basically, you're, you'll be asking the AD to go ahead and open it up for um, interviews. So you may, at the end of this, make a motion to direct him to do that because he can't do that without you. Yep. Okay. I would look for a motion to hire Doug Retzical as boys coach. I'll make a motion to approve Doug Retzical as head coach. Motion by Rob. I'll second. Seconded by Kurt. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All in favor of Doug as the boys coach, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That passes by a 5-1 vote. And now we need to direct our AD. I think open we, up. we should have a formal motion to um, direct the AD to find a new golf coach within the next two weeks. You're going to have to move on this one, Jay. Yeah. I make a motion to open up the AD to interview for a new girls head coach for golf. Motion by Rob to open up the girls coaching position. No, I'll second. Seconded by Kurt. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Can I ask the question? I, I guess I'm curious why you guys are going against the recommendation. It did pass by a 6-0 vote based solely on the only thing that we lacked at that time was people's names. And now in the last two weeks we've changed to 3-3. That would be your concern. Right. Yeah. When I voted the last time, I was voting to equal the pay that was very clear. But the motion was made to... No, we pulled up the golf coaches when we voted on that. Yes, that's why I voted the, that The way. last meeting was to approve the recommended, the yes. athletic director recommended but the meeting coaches. Was before, no, it was to approve the pay equalization. That, that too. But my motion, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You yeah. Here. Correct me if I'm wrong. It, it was... It, it, it was interesting. Remember, at the end of the meeting, I also had to leave to go down and, and help with the cut band. The way I received the notes was that you, there was no names attached, but had opened it up and agreed to two coaches equal pay. Um, we didn't have any names with names, so that's why we added it tonight with two names. So I think it could be, both of you could technically be right. It's how you interpreted it. So I don't think anyone's wrong here, but at the end of the day, we do have to have name and minutes, and that didn't happen. And so tonight you're adding the actual names. So that's all I can tell you is that this is the proper way to do it. Um, I know, Rob, you probably did say at the end we should have probably added names to make sure. So I don't think anything was done in, inappropriately, but under the circumstances it does have to go this way or not. I just think it was incomplete the last time, really what we did. I'd like to differ, but that's my, my opinion. Yeah, I guess I agree with Jerry on that, but, um, you know, if we sit here and pound this forever, we we don't get move ahead. I guess that's that's why I asked the question. And I'm in agreement. I read that the same way as you did. But again, we need to move forward with this. So there's a motion by Rob and a second by Kurt to open up the girls' head golf coaching job. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. 4-2. Four, 4-2. Four, no, three, three. Three, three. Three, three. So, so now we, won't, we don't have a girls head coach, nor do we have a vote to continue. What's your pleasure, folks? Do you want your boys coach to be the head coach and we can find an assistant um, similar arrangement that we've done this year? And not do the equal pay. Can we do that? If I had my druthers, we'd open both jobs up and start from scratch. I think, you know, our, just, I think just, our AD would be okay with that too. I want to. I don't want to speak for him. I, I guess I'm wondering if it's past. It's past that we that we not bring someone out the the women's golf coach in, and why do we want her not open it up to someone else? Can we ask for Jake's input? I mean, he's got yeah. a lot on the line here. I mean, I, I don't know. 
it's kind of blindsided me here a little bit. Um, but because of the one coach was not approved, man, he gets due process too. As Tim and I were talking about, so he he's understanding he's part this. of the contract. True. Okay. Um, he has a 14-day window. Done. March third, we have golf sign up, and you know, a couple weeks later, we get started. So I guess. I don't know what the best route is right now. So. And this coach does have 14 days to appeal this, so we can't do anything for those 14 days anyway. Um, so we're really kind of in a situation here because even if he was to open it for interviews, remember he can't hire until that grievance period is done. Um, we do have to follow the contract here. It's definitely a Schedule C matter. So. It's 14 days puts us in the beginning of the season. Not qu not, a, not quite, but close. Yeah. They get started on the 21st or something like that. Pass sign. Oh, yeah. Was has there been any um, discussion about the possibility of putting in an improvement plan? Yes. Yeah. We, we've discussed this a couple times. You know, we we just can't let this go for 14 days. It just doesn't look good. And whether or not it was based on finance or whatever, here we sit without a golf coach for the girls program. And it looks like there's dissent on both sides here. So would it be, would we name this person as an interim for the year? Would we put them on an improvement plan? And would that appease anyone on either side? I think that'd be a good idea, Bob. I think we, um, at this point, go with what we have. and. Um, put in place an improvement plan if we have to um, put it back on for a vote, if it, if it means someone has to rescind their, their vote or in that process. I'm not exactly sure what Robert's rules are. Well, I think we vote for a fourth time. We have to have to vote again. What would an intern coach mean in this district? I mean, we well, give it a title, but so next year comes along, they're still the coach. Does that contracted? Does it put us into the same situation 12 months later? What does it do differently? That is what I'm curious about. Well, all coaches are contracted until one day after the season's over, as I recall. Mm -hmm. and, at that, and at that point in time, we could, um, at least in the basketball coach's job a few years ago, we just decided we would vote to, to end that head coach shortly after the season was over. And then it gives us a whole 10 months if they didn't work on their improvement plan and improve. So, you know, we wouldn't have to wait till this 11th hour, so to speak, on this. We could just end it if that would be your choice after the golf season's over. I would, I would, I would you know, move to open it back up for vote with contingent of a, an improvement plan and that that's followed up with and, um, for a one year term again. Followed up for one year, followed up at the end of the season. Again, their season is done when their season is done. They're, they're head coaching. Right, yeah. but if we don't look at this till January of next oh, year, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Do we look at it in January? Do we look at it is in that a one June? Year? One season. Yeah, one, one season. season. One season. We just, uh, we would direct our AD to bring it up when the season's over. I don't think it would be. I'll so, make that motion. So we have a motion from Kurt. Second. And a second by Brenda. And I got to make this abundantly clear. Um, <laughs> a motion and a second for the continuance of Mr. Gisbold as the head girls coach, with the understanding that he will go through an improvement plan this year and that we'll review this shortly after the season is finished. Would that be the first and second there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. That passes by a 4 2 vote. So, Mr. Retzicle and Mr. Gisbold for the upcoming year. Under new biz, consideration to approve a gifted and talented stipend. Beth, help me. You know, I'm going to turn this over to Derek in a second, but overall, one of our main goals, and I thought we did a nice job of talking about it the night we set our district goals, the night we, or directives, direction that we were talking about. Um, one of the areas that I think Cannon Falls can do better in is offering gifted and talented programming and have people designated to do just that. 
Um, so with that, um, we were at one of our admin meetings and we were we talk about improvement all the time. And one of those ways was something Derek brought up, and I'm I'm really proud of his overall thinking on this project. So Derek, would you explain how we got to this point? Yeah. So. Uh, over the years, I've had many conversations with parents and other educators about, you know, what can we provide to students that are above grade level? And <laughs> so, um, it, you know, and, and we have a lot of support for our, our students that are that are at grade level or below, and really we don't have much, and we don't have a ton of funding that's tied with it, and that's that's partly the reason. And so, you know, I've been working with Beth the last four years trying to be creative with what we have and, and make sure we meet the needs of the kids. And we have a lot of things that do, but a lot of it's parent-driven or volunteer-driven. And uh, this one, this would provide us with that first step in the door for, for providing our young learners, uh, specifically, specifically the kids that do not, that don't have a cluster program, because we do have a cluster program in third to fifth grade. So these would, this teacher would focus on kids in kindergarten through second grade that are above grade level. With all the everyday kindergarten uh, and kids that come in without any preschool, but yet kids that come in reading, there's a pretty wide gap in terms of ability-wise, and we want to make sure that we're not holding back those kindergartners. And then, you know, there's still a gap when they get to first grade and making sure that we're not holding back those first graders because we don't have the resources to meet their needs. And, and our teachers do an amazing job at trying their best to meet every kid's needs. It's just they need support, and so that's what this would be. This is this is an, a, an early adopting program here, so this is not a, a, a fine, uh, this is not a well-oiled machine by any means, but I, I would love your support in, in trying it out. It's a $5,000 $5, stipend, and basically it's, it's for someone to come in half-time and work with these kids, they would be supporting, uh, they would be working with our GCD instructional coach, okay, because we're really, we're really focusing on literacy to begin with, but that doesn't, we're not limiting it to only literacy, okay, so. And Derek, I think you should be clear, this isn't in addition to anyone's job, sometimes a stipend means in addition to. Good point. This is a staff member that um, doesn't actually work for Cannonball Schools, but has been with us through American Corps, the Reading American Corps. 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 And that um, she's done now, and Derek would like, she's the perfect candidate for this. So he's already, it's not like we're gonna be out searching for someone, and this isn't an additional duty to someone's day. This is someone, this is all they do. This is completely and solely their only job. So pretty good bang for the buck for $5,000. Yeah. It, it really goes hand in hand with some discussion we had at our last mm -hmm. special meeting. We, we recognize that as a board that gifted and talented has been a, a spot that we can improve on. So your timing is real good. Excellent. Yeah, I would make a motion to approve second. I'll second. Motion by Brenda, second by me. Rob. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Consideration to approve the second reading of the post issuance compliance policy. The next two are just things we have to do. I know you've read them. Um, policy has reviewed them. We're on our second reading. So if you do have any specific questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, these are policies that we have to have in place. I'll make a motion to accept the second reading to approve the second reading of the policy. Motion by Rob. Second. Second by Josh. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consideration to approve the second reading of the district post issuance debt compliance procedures. I'll make a motion to accept the second reading. Third motion motion by Rob. No second. Seconded by Kurt. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consideration to approve the transportation vehicle replacement schedule. All right, I know we have another meeting coming in here at 5. Um, I didn't think this meeting would be quite this long. So I will summarize this, but if you don't feel comfortable on voting on this tonight, there is absolutely no reason to do that. If you see it's a discussion on there, 
Um, I thought, Josh, and tell me if you disagree, I thought we had an outstanding meeting with Andy. Uh, something frustrating from my standpoint is the entire five years that I've been superintendent, I've never had a true plan of where we're going with transportation. All we kept doing is saying, ah, a bus is broke down. Oh my gosh, we need a van. Um, and we know and we all acknowledge the fact that we are behind in our transportation schedule because of the funding that we've had. It's just really, really been tight. Um, if you look at this document, you'll see 1314, 1415, and 1516. What is in the light blue is a van. Okay, we have two of those. Each of those leases run around 25,000. Actually, it's a little closer to 21. So you will note that the van leases are more of a rounded number. Uh, the bus leases are exact, and we know what they're going to cost. Andy's proposal, which is not up here, was a little more aggressive. And we got to the point where our buses are so old, we actually talked about going out and looking at contracted services again. It was a conversation that came up in transportation because we don't want to get a new fleet of buses and then at some point be looking for that. We all know that a new bus is not going to hold its value. Um, but with that said, we know that we're in a four-year contract with Andy um, at this point, or three after this. And there were a lot of good arguments and discussion and good things that came up. Josh, again, stop me if I'm wrong. And I think where Josh and I and Josh Davison, the three of us, came back and said, although we love you did exactly what we asked you to do, put together a five-year plan, we don't agree it's too aggressive. We can't move that fast. We cannot, on one of the years, had gone up to $260,000 because he wants the buses replaced on the year that they're supposed to be replaced. Vans legally can be dri driven for 12 years, and buses can be driven until they don't pass MnDOT inspections, okay? And so we're going to go with a less aggressive approach and look at this as our five-year plan. Now, Josh, tell me again if I'm wrong on this. We agreed that 16, 17, and maybe 17, 18 are for sure. We know that we need those. We don't have much choices. We agreed that we're going to come back to you with a nine route system instead of a 10. This year we um, went up to a 10 because we had some students that lived way in our four corners and, and felt that we had to do that. Um, we won't have some of that next year, so we thought nine uh, buses with the amount of students we had made a lot of sense. And so the first two columns that you see here, those are pretty accurate. And this is built into the budget. Um, we spend about $800,000 a year on transportation, currently about $700,000. By the time we add a couple more leases, we'll be at about eight. If diesel stays low and some other good things happen, we're getting to the point where we're paying more on parts than we would on a lease. A bus lease, you know, as you can see up here is right around, um, let's see, 38,000. And if we're spending 27,000 in parts, and we don't even know if it'll pass MnDOT inspection. We have to do what makes sense. So we're not looking for any approval tonight. I just wanted to review with you. It was important to me to have some sort of plan. Bob, I'm not sure. I think you might have been the one that actually brought that up, to come together and get some sort of plan together so we at least know where we're going versus just every year kind of coming to you with vans and, and buses. So this isn't an action item. Just discussion. No, I, um, I'm not sure it's how it's exactly listed here. Yeah, it's a Consideration action. to approve. You know, if you want to approve it, remember that this is a moving document. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I would be looking for is the approval of next year. I need to know that we're moving forward with that next year plan for sure. Now, can we stick to that five year plan? Probably not, but it's really a good idea to have something so that I have budget increases because right now I'm not even sure what to put in. So the approval would be mostly on the 1617 plan for next year at 158,000. Um, that remind, remember this year we're spending 143, so the cost difference is very minimal. One other quick point, I know we're on a time crunch here, is remember we went to the taxpayers for this referendum. They kept saying, "How are you going to spend the 560?" And we had exact numbers. We weren't going to change anything. We we're going to keep current programming, but there was that small amount left. It was 38,000. And we promised we would work on the transportation. So at every meeting, I did let the community know that we would be working on our fleet of, of buses and vans. I'd like to see a little bit more just in the, in the next, uh, not next year, but the years after that, the four years after. But I would approve for the upcoming year. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve that. I'd be okay with that. Sure. <coughs> 16, 17, 17, 18. That'd be the 16, 17. 16, 17. That would be fine, Kurt. We'll run it through finance at the end of the year, too, yeah. because that'll be our projected budget. So you'll see this again at finance. Sure. There's a motion by Kurt to approve the 16, 17 expenditures for bus leases slash purchase. I'll second. Seconded by Josh. Yep. 
other discussion. Josh, you went through this transportation. Yeah, I did. And the nice thing is for next year, um, it was kind of, I mean, nice to see Andy's numbers and what Josh and Beth had pulled together met exact. I mean, for, for, for 16, 17, like she mentioned, it gets out farther. Of course, he wants a little more, but it's a moving document. So, but it was nice to see we both, you know, we're on the same page. Um, and if he wanted more or whatever, I said, we're not cutting anything. So we're not going there. We passed the referendum. We promise we're not doing it. So let's stick to that next year and we'll go from there. This says your full support for transportation. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consideration to approve a lease request. Leave request, lease. The first one is for Kate Dolan. She is requesting a leave of three weeks. Um, I would support this leave. I think motion to approve. Brenda made the motion. Jerry made the second. God, that was cool. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Gary, consideration to approve a leave request. Number two. Uh, second one is a leave for Sarah Satala Tobin for approximately six weeks. And you have my support on this one as well, as well as Jake's. I'll make a motion. Motion by Kurt. I'll second. Second by Rob. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Medical leave. Last one is for Roxanne Sauter for approximately four weeks. Uh, this one also has my my approval and Sharon Noble's approval. 20 weeks? Uh, four, approximate. These are all approximate. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve. Josh made the motion. Seconded by? Okay. Jerry. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Gary. Consideration to approve the travel overnight procedures for activities. <coughs> Beth? Well, we've been working very hard on this. Jake especially deserves a ton of credit on this. Um, Jerry, you've been remarkable at answering questions and getting kind of a general feel from the board. Um, I know he never, he always says, I'm not speaking for the board. This is what I like. Um, I think Jake would be the best one to point out some of the changes here. Yeah. I wouldn't mind doing that. I'll point them out up here, but you could. So a lot of this stuff is kind of things we currently are using, the practices we're currently using. I did leave some stuff in italics. I know it's kind of hard to always see, but those are kind of things that we've stressed in the last couple of years. Um, for example, there, coaches will witness parents sign their child out instead of just passing around their, the sign-in sheet, the sign-out sheet if they're going to write home with their parents. Um, Coaches are confirmed that all student athletes are boarded the bus before departing. We've always done that, but we put a more stricter uh, procedure in place for that. That came up last year. Um, number eight. This is um, this year. We're gonna put a limit on the number uh, number of miles you can travel without getting prior approval. You know, we have, we've had some teams that go quite some distance, and um, and it ends up leading to you either need a hotel stay or it's costing us all kinds of money. So we're gonna put a criteria there for requesting trips that are over 120 miles one way. And then overnight stays, there's a few criteria there um, that they, the trips must meet before we could approve anything for being an overnight stay. And again, those are things that we've been doing. If you've heard, you know, there's been trips that I've denied and you're aware of those, but a lot of times we didn't have it in exact rating. So we thought this was a lot clearer for everyone. Make a quick question on, I'm reading these one through four and, and three is almost sounds like it's the uh, override. Request not meeting, completion, Competing in more than one day is or getting director, AD, or building principal approval just gets superintendent approval. So are you the overriding that if they don't do the one or two, they can just go to you for number three and get it done? Or how does... No, I would, they have to go through the process, the steps. They go to the AD first. I think we, we wanted to keep that in there in case something like that came up. Especially number four there. You know, um, if they were a long ways away and they're in a blizzard, and they need to stay in a hotel or something like that. Right. We, we wanted it to that. be yeah. that they could, if, if for some reason I wasn't available or whatever, they need to make a good, solid admin decision, they could do that. I just didn't understand three. It just looked almost like an override. It did. We thought so too, but we weren't yeah. sure. We thought this was still a, a good way to do it. You know, I think, you know, the coaches the coaches really like to be able to do these overnight trips for, for many reasons. And I think that one's kind of in there, you know, 
for a, you know, a special circumstance or something like that. And then actually the out-of-state travel is straight from the Minnesota High School League. There's not really any reason to have it in here, but it's nice because then everyone sees it and has it. But there's nothing for us to change in this because this is their policy and their procedure. We ran into that for the dance team trip a year ago when they went to Florida. They had to follow that. They can't compete if they go over 600 miles. They can only practice or perform. And that's what their dance team did. But that doesn't change um, out-of-state travel. They can go play Prescott or, you know, play Ellsworth and River Falls um, because those are under 600 miles. They can play those games still. So we thought this cleared up some of your concerns. Um, we would hope that you would approve this tonight. Again, it's a document. It's not a policy. It's a procedure. If there's something we don't like and, you know, something comes up, we can revisit this every year. I just got one question for like the overnight stay, Jake. What if they're like down in Rochester and they can come home, but it's overnight for competition? Would they have that? You know, we, we've allowed it in the past if it's a two day. And according to this, I mean, I guess competition is more than one day. Um, but only for like a state, state something. You know, or, you know, we've had, you know, volleyball's done it. We've had lots of those teams. I think that's the way when we were working on this is that we're not going to completely eliminate it. If there's a two-day tournament or something like that, we could allow an overnight stay. Are you asking if they wanted to come home, but it's an overnight stay? Well, no, I'm just wondering if you're looking at the feasibility of it, where okay. it costs you know maybe $200 to drive down the back it versus... It doesn't cost the school anything. It all comes out yeah, of their accounts. The yeah, school does not pay for that. I get all that, but all money comes from someplace. That's that's, oh. <laughs> that's my, my issue is... If you got someone that's down in Rochester, let's say, you know, and it's, they can come home at night, depending on when it maybe ends or something, too, I suppose, but you know, you're going to be racking up a bill of probably $1,400 for them to stay overnight versus a, another bus ride home. I'm, I may be, I'm just saying we, we have to be cautious on that, too. And, and it, I don't know, it's, it, those bills run up pretty quick if you got a, say you got a dance team and you got, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because it actually does save the school a lot of money. I'm not paying a driver to stay down. I'm not paying a driver and a bus to go back and forth. I'm saving a lot on mileage. I, I know, you know, yeah. my hat is always where's the school's money going. So if they decide to stay down there and they pay for it, that driver can go down, drop them off, come back, and I don't have to send them back to the end of the day. Otherwise, I'm paying their daily weight rate. I'm I'm usually paying for them to stay in a hotel so instead it's of driving back and forth. Not, not too far off from Right. Where to be honest, it saves the school. And I, I know that that's my main job is to save the school's money. So that's the way I think about it. OK. We are requiring, um, even if it's, you know meets all the other criteria, it still needs AD or building principal uh, approval. Okay. So if it is something that we don't feel that it's Sounds good. excessive, you want to approve it. OK. Does that help, Kurt? Yep. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Motion by Josh, second by Kurt. Further discussion? You know, as Beth brought up a good point, procedure. We can look at this if we don't like it in a year, if we want to amend it, it's easily done. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Discussion to eliminate participation fees. This one will be really easy. We'll make it super <laughs> fast. Um, what happened is when we were really at our bottom, we were cutting everything. We didn't have any other options. We were paying for advisors. <coughs> we came, I, <laughs> I won't even put Jake under the bus on this one. I thought it was such a great idea to at least charge $65 for things like jazz band and, and um, junior high things that you know just didn't seem like they should be doing it for free. FFA was a great example. Well, one, our numbers went way down. And two, when they do go to something like BPA, like yeah. Jake, we end up having to pay now for the bus and the travel and everything. We actually end up spending more on those six events than we did prior. And so although it was a good intent, I think our parents spoke loudly when they passed this referendum. Um, they're paying $100 some, you know, per $150,000 home. Let's give them a little bit of a break. Don't charge $65 for those smaller you know, junior high jazz choir, things like that, <coughs> when in, in reality it's end up costing us more money and enrollment was down. I want these kids to participate. We're not making much money off of it. When you've got kids not going out for FFA because it's $65, it's not right. And I'll, I'll take all the blame. It was an idea to try to raise more money and it actually, I fully admit, just did not work out well. So I would really like to those non-high active groups, I'd like to take, have you consider 
taking off the $65 fee for that. Well, I'll make a motion to eliminate participation. I'll second. Motion by Kurt, seconded by Brenda, to eliminate the participation fee for the $65 activities. Further discussion? Is there a refund for this year? No. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Um, next board meeting, you can take a look and see about the activities we have for the March 14th. Um, I did ask Beth to speak to a school resource officer because it's time that we at least discuss this again. Okay. Can um, I mention one other upcoming meeting for Goodhue Good County Ed District this Thursday night, the 25th? Is there a dinner with the, where they invite all board members? They explain what GCE does, and that's at 530, I believe. I'm going to say the girls are playing in Kenyon. Um, it's important that I support the boys tonight and the girls on Thursday, so I will not be at that dinner. I apologize, but I pretty much have good Yukon kind of District down, so I think you guys will be okay. That's it. Okay. Um, just before we close, the vice chairman wanted to make a comment. I'm never sure about the propriety of such things, but. Yeah, I just want to make a comment on golf. I guess I am disappointed that it went the direction it did. Um, <clears throat> the original reason it was held up was because of funding equally both coaches, which worked with Jake and Beth and myself. We we're able to get to an even means between the two coaches. <clears throat> Personally, I think there's alternative uh, motives and getting rid of uh, Lee, but that's not my business. I will say a couple of board members have come and talked to me after the first meeting, I just don't think it was all about money. And if it was all about money, it should have been a 6-0 vote uh, in favor of the goal, the recommendation of the athletic director. I'd like to make a quick comment. We're going the wrong way. That comment, I think, is way out of line at a meeting. I don't think it's out of line at all. I do. All right. The vote's done. The vote is done. I would agree with We're that. Done. Yeah, um, we are. Our, if, our, if our ultimate goal here was to make sure that we had a, a boys and girls golf coach, we now have that. So that should be, that should be our final word on that. So um, any other comment I think we'll just cease with. So I would look for a motion to adjourn. You can't yet. We Why? have to end in a very exciting moment. <laughs> it is school board appreciation week and we want to appreciate everything all of you do. People have no idea how much time and effort you spend with this. It's not just Monday nights, it's just not a few breakout sessions, it's tech meetings and facility meetings and everything else. People in the community have no idea how much time and effort you put into this. And my sincere thank you to everything you do for our school. So um, you're getting, do we show them, Lori, the fancy picture? Well, I was, I was hoping for a cake. Well, <laughs> you okay, to okay. I gotta get your Rochester there. Um, I, I missed the picture, but you have a little something coming, and it's very special from Lori and I. We'll just leave it at that. Is there a picture by your arm Pictures? We lost it. You know that. I know you don't have to give us anything. How kind. Yes, it's, it's, oh, here it is. Superheroes to match our. You're all getting a special. Oh, and Brenda and I, okay? are, there's only one female. Superhero. <laughs> that was the uh, but that was, was the really format for the MSBA. Yeah, yeah. our superheroes. conference was superheroes. So, Lori found this. So it's taking a long time. It's a costume meeting <laughs> next next meeting. Not something? only did it beat the five dollar rule, it met the one dollar rule. It's <laughs> 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 taking so long to get here. Thank you so Thank you. much to the acknowledgement. So now I'm Thank looking you. for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. I'll second. Kurt, did you make that motion? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And Rob, did you it. second? I did. All right. Thanks for your work. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>